Let's look now at a sunset sky. I'm going to mix for this three really warm, bright colours. And I've started by cleaning the mixing areas in the palette, so we've got a nice clean surface to work on. The first colour I'm going to mix with plenty of water is a mixture of Oriolin. This lovely vivid yellow that you get in the bottom of the sky in an evening. The next colour, we start with Oriolin again. A nice fluid wash. And I'm going to turn this into a, a bright orange by adding some rose madder. That gives us a lovely vivid orange colour. Then you need to clean the brush thoroughly. If you've any of that orange on your brush when you dip it into the blue, you'll get a grey straight away. And what we really want is a nice sunset purple. So we're starting with ultramarine. And turning that into a purple by adding the rose madder. It's worth remembering to mix plenty of paint again. The same applies, or every time you, you start to paint wet in wet, the same applies. It's better to have more than not enough. Clean the brush thoroughly, because again we're going to coat the top of the paper, the top area where the, uh, the, covering the whole sky with clean water, and it does need to be really clean. It's a case of not creating puddles either. It's a nice, even coating of water with horizontal strokes working right the way down to the pencil line. And then starting at the bottom with the mixture of Oriolin we start to lay that in again with nice even strokes. A really bright yellow. From about the halfway point, without washing the brush, start to introduce the orange. You don't need to wash the brush because these tone in together anyway. But this is a graduated wash. We don't want a line where the orange meets the yellow. It's got to be gradual. Bringing that right to the top. Now I'm going to wash the brush out, but then get most of the moisture off your brush. Squeeze it between your fingers to get the water off the brush, or you'll dilute the purple colour. And then with a good brush full of the purple, this is the mixture of ultramarine and rose madder, start at the top left hand corner and start to put streaks of colour in. Make these marks go slightly uphill at an angle, not totally horizontal, make it slope slightly uphill. A bit more of the purple at the top, make the sky stronger at the top so you can go lighter towards the horizon. Now as we come down, try to leave one or two gaps so that you can still see the orange and the yellow underneath it. And then clean the brush, take most of the moisture off so it's just damp, and just fade those colours in. Touch more of the orange, just fade them in as you get nearer to the horizon. And that's that stage complete. Now keep practising this sunset sky and when you're happy with one of them, we'll have a look at how you can make that again into a simple landscape. Now you're going to need those three colours we use for the sky, so I'm leaving them where they are in the palette. Uh, and then I'm going to make a grey by taking some Oriolin and Rose Madder to create an orange. Now this has got to be a thicker mixture than the ones you used for the sky. In other words, less water and more pigment till you get an orangey red. And when you've got that orangey red, take some ultramarine and you're looking for a browny grey. Really work it all in. Okay, and that's fine. So now you've got to really clean the brush. 
Again, we're going to wet the background just above the horizon line and the water has to be clean. Okay, so let's wet the background from the horizon line about an inch upwards into the sky. Nice, neat, horizontal strokes. And then take a really good brushful of the brownie grey and start at the left hand side just touching it in. We want to get that soft misty edge to these distant trees. Vary the shapes a bit. Don't make them all the same shape and size. It won't look natural. Do a few larger ones and then a few smaller ones. Working your way all the time across the paper. Try and work quite rapidly because you can see how this effect depends on the wet background. Plenty of paint on the brush. I'm going back to wet the bottom half a bit more there to intensify the colour a bit. Working all the way across, still remembering to vary the shapes and sizes. Now let's just look how we can finish this simple scene off by putting some water in the foreground, showing some reflections. We're going to need the same colours again. The three colours we used in the sky, which was Oriolin, Oriolin and Rose Madder, and Ultramarine and Rose Madder. We also need some of that dark grey brown that we've just used for those distant trees. If you've used up this paint in the first stage, it doesn't matter. Take the time to mix it all again. I'm going to take a brush full of clean water and wet the whole bottom area of the picture, trying to leave just a tiny little white line to separate the bank from the water. Just a tiny little white line of dry paper. And then bring the clean water right down to the bottom of the scene. If it's, if it's wet like this in the first place, it gives you longer to work on it, because these reflections are wet in wet. Okay, now what we've got to think of is because this water is a reflection of the sky, it's upside down. So where we had the yellow in the bottom of the sky, that goes in first, that becomes the top of the water. Taking it up to those to that horizon line, trying to leave a tiny white line. It doesn't have to be a continuous white line, you can break it up in one or two places. We're not looking for total accuracy. Now brush in horizontal strokes, take that Oriole in straight across and then about halfway down introduce, still sticking with horizontal strokes, introduce the orange mixture and take the orange mixture right to the bottom of the painting. Softening it in so it's a graduated wash. And then you don't need to wash your brush, you can go straight in now to the purple mixture the Rose Madder and Ultramarine, and just at the very bottom of the picture, brush in some of that purple so that it becomes a reflection of the sky. Now straight away, while that's still wet, charge up your brush with the grey brown, and we're going to try now to get a, a look of reflection in the water. by more or less repeating the shapes that are above the water in the reflections. Try and maintain that very tiny white line. And it doesn't have to be a mirror image, just an approximation. Keep recharging the brush with paint. If you try and make the, break, the paint spread too thinly, it goes paler. Now this at the moment looks darker than the trees above that it's reflecting, but that's because it's wet. When it dries, it should be more or less the same. And keep working across. Try to work fairly quickly on this. If you do that, you get it all done before the background dries and you get that soft shape. Let's have a look. Let's try to repeat those shapes 
that are above the line, below the line. A bit more of the colour in at the top of the reflections. Try and narrow that white line slightly. And that's it. Very important to leave this alone once you've done it. Just drop those colours in and leave it. It'll soften into the background and create a feeling of reflection in the water. So that's a couple of sky methods for you to practice. I can't stress too strongly how important it is to keep practicing and trying these. A good idea is to take a large sheet of watercolour paper and divide it up into, say, postcard sized sections and just keep practicing and practicing. It will get easier and you certainly will see an improvement as you carry on. In the next lesson, we're going to look at painting different types of trees. now available on DVD. Try these techniques yourself at home whenever you wish. Today's workshop is part of the Watercolour as if by Magic Beginners course. Six fantastic 20-minute workshops on DVD, now available to order from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.